All right, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Go Capital. Uh, this is going to be the lesson one for basic one forest classes. The forest classes are going to be many, and we, but this is the first lesson. I did the introduction last week when I said we're going to do a six months course which will include forest, binary, and cryptocurrencies, as the case may be. So on the forest classes, this is going to be the first lesson for this course. I will join you to uh, watch this lesson and do the assignments that are inside because there's going to be assignment. Why? I want you to be carried along. I do not want this to be the conventional YouTube tutorials that you have been attending. I just want this to be like a real life class as if you are physically present with me or as if you are on a Zoom section with me so that you, the class can be interactive. So the assignments you do are going to be the only way by which uh, I can Say, you know be able to cement your progress so i want you to participate in the assignment that i will be giving so i'll be giving assignment at the end of the class or in the middle of the class so you just take notes and do the assignment so at this junction i would like to tell you to go and pick up your notebook and your pen and also if you find a way to download the video you can download but i will especially love that you watch the video to the end and you share it with your friends so that um, you can uh, also impart others as i'm imparting you so this is forest class basic one lesson one okay so uh, please 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 smash the like button press the subscribe button if you have not subscribed you know share this video and you can also put your comments below what you have to say about the video and also remember i'm doing this as an offer for free because of people who made requests for it i never had an intention of opening a channel here before so but uh, this is what i have to do now for the sake of everyone who wants to make money and also uh, i will please advise you uh, always answer the assignment do the assignment and you can post your answers in the comment section as that is the only place i can interact with you for now all right let's get started uh forest class basic one lesson one please before the class starts let me give a disclaimer um trading leverage products such as forex derivatives commodities metals binary and crypto may not be suitable for all investors as they carry a high degree of risk to your capital the materials and slides shared in this video are simply for education purposes go capital will not be responsible for any loss incurred as a result of the information shared this video is my personal opinion and you agree that Whatever actions you take based on them is strictly at your own risk. This video is not a financial advice, simply for education purposes. All right, with that said and done, let's get started. Uh, the first question we'll ask ourselves is, what is forest? What is forest? Forest is a coinage of two words, foreign exchange foreign and exchange so the first letter uh, the first three letters of the first word foreign and then the first two letters of the coin when you coin them together you have the word forex so that is what forex is uh forex is the art of buying and selling currency for another forex is the art of buying or selling one currency for another. So all of us participate in the forest market. 
uh, when you buy a currency or you sell a currency, you have actually participated in the forest market. So, and this is what you will learn to do at the end of this course. You will learn how to buy currencies. You will learn how to sell currencies for one another. That is what you are here to learn. Okay. So forest is the art of buying or selling one currency for another. History of Forex. Forex was first introduced in 1971 when the Britain Wood system was abolished. The Britain Wood system was the first monetary policy governing exchange rates. Point three. Forex was initially inaccessible to the common person due to the large amount of capital required. Point four, banks, large corporate traders and very wealthy individuals were the only groups able to participate in Forex before. Now, the last point here is since Forex was introduced, it was, you know, it was in 97 when it was introduced now, according to the first point. So it has undergone a significant evolution. A lot of changes have taken place. So with the advent of retail forex, individuals can now trade in foreign exchange without having to source massive capital. Now the forex market actually was not accessible to the layman on the street. It was something that is done by banks and large corporate uh, firms. Uh, but because of the advent of the internet, all of us today, you and I, retailers like us, can participate in the forest market simply just because of the advent of the internet. Do you understand me? So we want to leverage on the internet to participate in the foreign exchange market. So the internet is one of the reasons why this is available to everyone at the moment so the assignment you are going to take from this is you're going to read about the britain woods agreement or the britain Woods system don't mind my pronunciation i'm a nigerian so <laughs> uh, just take it the way i'm pronouncing it but i believe you can see for yourself and read for yourself so assignment is number one you have to read about the britain woods agreement system what does it mean what is that system about you need to read about this because if you want to come and trade money, want to come and trade currencies, you should know how money has evolved over the years. So number two, you read about the gold standard. Just type them like this on Google or any of your search engine and just search for it. Then three, read about the dollar standard. So if you can do this uh, little assignment, you will have a broader perspective of the history of Forex. Now, I know you think you don't need the history of Forex. You do, because you are going to stumble upon a lot of facts that will assist you in the advanced class. So I would like you to do this assignment, read about all of this as it is important to your growth. All right, the importance of Forex. Forex is the largest financial market in the world with approximately 6.6 .6 trillion dollars traded on a daily basis you know that's huge that's that's big i don't know whether you understand but that is actually really big so it has approximately 100 times the value of the new york london and tokyo stock exchange combined then the second point is market orders are executed immediately. Yeah, that is one important of Forex. Uh, it, it has an advantage over other kinds of market. The orders are executed immediately. Therefore, Forex has high liquidity. You understand what all of these terms are. Liquidity is the available money for buying and selling in the market. If the available market, the market quantity the market's volume the market the amount of money available in the market for buying and selling so liquidity is money in the pool is the quantity of currency in the pool 
has to say it in a layman's language. Do you understand? So point three, because of the sheer size of the foreign exchange market, it is not easily manipulated by media coverage or big buy and sell orders from corporate organizations or banks. Actually, banks trade against each other in this market. Corporate bodies, hedge funds, all kinds of uh, monetary bodies, they, they trade the forest market. So the volume in the market is big, the size is large. So one of them cannot just decide to shake the market. It has to take a significant amount of orders for the market to change. So one single individual does not have the capacity to manipulate the forest market. Then number four, in comparison to the stock market, the forest market has low transaction or brokerage costs. Yeah, when you are participating in the forest market, you are going to be paying little, 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 little fees, little, little fees, like transaction fees, they call them commission. So all of these ones, are, are, when you compare it with the stock market, it is very, very low in comparison with the stock market. So that is one importance of forest. Then forest market participants. Who are those people that participate in the forest market? Who are those that trade the forest market? Number one, the super banks or the flow masters the super banks or the flow masters you can also call them the hedge funds examples of them are city jp morgan ubs barclays dutch bank goldman sachs hfdc bank of america and the list goes on and on and on and on now second point here is large commercial companies for instance, Apple. So Apple must first exchange its US dollars for the Japanese yen when purchasing electronic parts from Japan for its products. You know, Apple buys some parts from Japan. So when it's going to buy those kind of products, it has to exchange the dollars it has with uh, J Japanese yen in order for transaction to take place. So that is also a foreign exchange. Then the third point here uh, is government and central banks. Government and central banks. In fact, you can even include Federal Reserve as part of this list as well. So um, the central banks, governments, uh, you know, just for example, the European Central Bank, Bank of England, Federal Reserve, they are all regularly involved in the forest market too. Then lastly here, the speculators. The speculators are entities, individuals, bodies that participate in the forest market by speculating. So they are not actually in control also, like they, they are not from, they are not like the banks that trade from, uh, they are not like the central banks. They, are, they can be individuals, they can be hedge funds, they are speculators they speculate prices they they buy and sell currency with the hope that it's going to you know either buy or sell in the future do you understand so they just speculate the market then the, the last i would have included but i didn't is retailers like us individuals like us who don't have the big money that those people have so all of these people here they are the all the big guys in the market they are the ones that can actually move markets significantly if a good number of them gets involved in trading. Now, factors that affect the forex market. Number one of the factors I will look at here is interest rates. There are many, 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 many other factors. The list is endless. But I just want to look at these ones because uh, they are important. Uh, number one is interest rate. The interest rate is the, the amount of a lender charges a borrower and the percentage of the amount loaned. Um, why did I pick this definition? I want to tell you that all money you have is not your money. The money you have currently in your hand belongs to your government. Yes, all money is loaned to you. The money you are using to eat, the money you're using to buy clothes and everything. I know you think you work for them. You have been laboring at your place of work. 
you got a job and you are being paid salary at the end of the day please note that every money you have belongs to your government they actually loan it to you so all money in circulation in any economy is lended is borrowed to the public so that means the government the central banks they have the autonomy to raise interest based on that money and this is how the circle works this is a circle uh, when the economy is contracting the central banks will cut interest rates they will reduce it so the economy starts expanding after that so when the economy starts expanding the inflation will increase as a result of the economy expanding now i don't have to do all of these uh, rudiments for you because this is uh, not really something in this course. If you have done maybe economics before, you will understand this. Uh, so maybe if you have not done economics, just mind, just take the the chart as you are seeing it. So then, uh, when inflation increases, central banks will hike. They hike the interest rate. They will increase it. So when they increase it, the economy start contracting, and the circle continues, 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 continues. So this actually affects the forest market because when you are participating in the forest market you are participating in the economy of that country that owns that currency the what defines the strength of an economy is the currency the strength of its currency so if you are buying and selling in the forest market you are actually buying shares in those economy do you understand so that's why the second thing that can actually affect uh, forest market now is the economic stability macroeconomic statistics such, such as inflation they have the greatest impact on forest market stock bond commodity and other capital markets also have a strong influence on exchange rates international trade numbers such as trade deficits and surpluses they all play a vital role in a forest market the third point here is trade weighted index. The trade weighted index uh, is like, you know, it's an is comparing a particular currency uh, with other currencies, with, the, with a basket of other currencies. Let me read from here. It said a trade weighted currency index is a weighted average of a basket of currencies that reflects the importance of the country's trade, import and export with these currencies. So like for example now, you are in your own country and the trade weighted index of your particular currency is the value it has when compared with other countries' currencies based on your imports and exports to those countries. Do you understand? So the value of your currency as compared with other countries' currencies that you are regularly involved with in imports and exports. So then the next point here is world events. World events, world events like natural disasters, holidays, you know, pandemic like the COVID-19 and a lot of stuff, world events generally, world events, they all affect um, the forest market. Do you understand? World events. In fact, Something as as uh, how many of you watched that uh, interview that the interview Cristiano Ronaldo uh, some months ago when he pushed the bottle of coke aside from the table and put replaced the bottle of water, you note that the stock um, uh, Coca Cola crashed. That that not really crashed, but I mean they they lost some amount of money uh, in their in their stock in their value that particular day that is football football can actually affect you know forest market anything affect forest market anything so then also uh government debts all of these can also affect the forest market there are many 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 other things but these are the important ones i want to pick out to you guys for you guys to see so let's move to the next slide what is traded in forest the simple answer is money. Money. That is what we trade in the forest market. We buy, we sell money. You get involved in money. You buy money, you sell money. You use money to buy money, you use money to sell money. That is 
how the forex market is. So what is trading in forex market is simply money. Do you understand? So this money is a representation of a country's economy. It's a representation of a country's stable uh, economy. Yeah. When you are buying money of a particular country, you are investing into that country. You are investing into their economy. You are buying shares in that country. So there are eight major currencies. There are eight major currencies. I'm not saying that your country, <laughs> your country's currency is not major, but in the forex market, there are eight major currencies. There may be others, but these are the major ones and there are eight in numbers. Number one of them is the US dollar. The US dollar. The US dollar is the number one of them. And um, it is represented with USD. This is a symbol for it, USD, USD. Then the nickname is box, can I say dollar or box? So those are some of the, the, the terms that forest traders uses. They use the, the word dollar, they use the word box to represent the US dollar. Then um, the second currency here is the European uh, Euro, which is represented with the symbol EURO. Some pronounce it as EU, uh, but the nickname is Euro. Euro. Some pronounce it as EU, EU. But that is um, the way it is, EURO, and the nickname is Euro. Then number three here is Japanese yen. The Japanese yen is represented with JPY. JPY. So JPY is the Japanese yen, and it, the nickname is yen. Some patients pronounce it as J, J. So then um, the fourth one here is the British pound. The British pound is GBP, GBP, or pound sterling. That's the nickname pound or pound sterling. Some pronounce it as G. So then. Uh, then the next one here, number five, is the Swiss franc. The Swiss franc. CHF, that's a symbol. The nickname is Swizzy. Then the next one here is the Canadian dollar. She's the CAD. Some pronounce it as CAD, but the thing is Looney. That's the nickname. The nickname is Looney. But some pronounce it as CAD. It's actually CAD. Then um, the seventh one here is the Australian dollar, AUD. The nickname is Aussie. Then the last one here is the New Zealand dollar, which is NZD. The nickname is Kiwi. So these are the eight major currencies in the foreign exchange market. So in our next class, we are going to do this in further details we we'll do the major currency pairs and we we'll go on and on and on and talk about how they are crossed with one another because in a foreign exchange we trade pairs pairs why if you are buying a currency it means you are selling another one if you are selling the currency it means you are buying another one you don't you cannot trade one currency in isolation you trade one currency as against another. You understand? You trade one currency against another. That is what happens in the first market. If you have the dollar and you want to get euro, it means you sell your dollar and get euro and buy euro. Do you understand? So tomorrow, sorry, on on when on Thursday rather, because the classes is going to be Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. So three videos in a week so that you can keep the pace, you know, your, when there is too much gap, you may forget or you may not be interested, you may lose the reading 
of the of the course so i'm going to be uploading a video on tuesday another on thursday and another on saturday so that you can that's how i keep doing it every week week in week out all right so please make sure you do the other assignment that i mentioned read about the britain woods agreement um read about the gold standard read about the dollar standard and um the only thing i ask you after this point is please like the video press the subscribe button if, if you have not subscribed we have more coming in more 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 content coming in and then uh, share this video to your friends all right thanks for watching